it's Sarah and welcome to my crochet channel today's video is step number five in our crochet along sweet baby doll stuffy we've completed the doll and if you would like those patterns you can find that up in the corner just click that link today's is step number five and we're going to be making a baby blanket and this blanket measures 24 by 24 inches if stitched according to the pattern now you can make it wider and longer and adjust the size as well so you can make it into any size that you would like it could be a bigger baby blanket a toddler blanket or even a big blanket for your bed and I'll explain all that to you when we get a little farther on in the video now you can find the free pattern for this blanket in the link provided in the notes underneath this video first let's talk about what yarn you're going to need for this blanket I used one of these baby cakes and it has three and a half ounces on it and then I also used one of these Vanna's choice in cream to stripe my yarn so that I had a contrasting color to go with my variegated or changing color cake now this is not the cake that I used I used the same one that I used for my sweet baby doll with the colors pink and blue and green and yellow and the name of it is called cotton candy so you're going to need at least three and a half ounces of one color and then another three and a half ounces of another color that you want to contrast you do not have to stripe it you can do it all in one color you can do it all in your cakes that change colors it doesn't matter you're just going to need worsted weight or medium weight number four yarns you'll need three and a half of one and three and a half of another so that makes about seven ounces of yarn that you're going to need for this blanket all right and again any medium weight number four yarn will work we're going to be stitching today with our eye hook this eye hook is a 5.50 millimeter crochet hook you'll need a needle to weave those ends in and of course a pair of scissors now before we get started stitching up our blanket I want to explain to you how to adjust the blanket now for length it's really easy two rows equal approximately one inch but for the width you're going to want to stitch in increments of three plus ten and what that means is that three foundation double crochets equal one inch and then you need to do an additional ten foundation double crochets and that's because we're going to need those at the beginning and end of each row to make the pattern work out so if you're making the blanket as the pattern is written for a 24 by 24 inch blanket you're going to need to stitch 76 foundation double crochets for today's demonstration I am not going to be remaking the whole blanket I'm going to be explaining to you how to do the stitches and change colors with a swatch one thing I do recommend is as you're stitching your foundation double crochets for your beginning row to use some stitch markers to mark every so many stitches and that way you don't have to keep recounting your stitches for my demo swatch I'm going to be stitching 22 foundation double crochets we're going to begin with our slip knot we're going to chain four yarn over and we're going to go in the fourth chain from the hook pull up a loop yarn over and just go through the first loop that's our chain that we made now we're going to yarn over go through the next two yarn over and go through the last two so we did our chain and our double crochet together 
we're going to go in that chain that we made pull up a loop yarn over and just go through that loop then we're going to yarn over go through the first two yarn over and go through the second two and we're going to repeat this for as many stitches as you need for the blanket that you're making if you're making the blanket as written you're going to need 75 foundation double crochets I'm just making a swatch of 22 foundation double crochets I'm beginning with my baby cakes yarn and then I'll be changing every two rows to my cream color yarn that I showed you earlier you do not have to make stripes you can do it all in one color or however you want to do to match your sweet baby doll and if you're just making this for a baby again any colors of your choosing all right let's make sure you understand how to do the foundation double crochet yarn over go in that chain that we made from our previous stitch and pull up loop yarn over go through the first one yarn over go through the next two yarn over and go through the next two so what's happening is basically when we're making a foundation double crochet we're making the chain and the double crochet without having to make chains previously all right so I'm going to continue on making my 22 foundation double crochets and you make as many as you need for the blanket that you're making once you have stitched as many foundation double crochets as you need for the size blanket that you need we're going to bring in our second color for row two now on this blanket we're not going to be cutting our yarn on the sides we're going to let it trail up the sides and then when we come in and put our trim on we'll cover that up so I've joined in my new color and I'm going to chain three and now we're going to turn and we're going to stitch a double crochet in the next double crochet and then the next two so we'll have four double crochets at the beginning of this row so now we're going to do our shell stitches our shell stitches is three double crochets in the same stitch we're going to skip the next two stitches and then in the next stitch stitch three double crochets one two three and then what we're going to do is we're going to repeat sti skipping two stitches and then stitching a shell stitch all the way across until we have six stitches left so we'll skip the next two and stitch our shell stitch which is three double crochets in the in the same stitch three double crochets in the same stitch we'll skip the next two and repeat our shell stitch skip the next two and repeat our shell stitch you'll continue to repeat this across skip two three double crochets in the next skip two three double crochets in the next all the way across until we have one two three four five six stitches left on the end we'll skip the next two stitches and stitch one double crochet in each of those last four double crochets And of course that last one is our chain three that we started with that counts as one double crochet I'm going to go ahead and chain three and this will explain to you the repeats we need four double crochets at the beginning 
And then we have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, repeated continually across. And then we end up with six on the end for one, two, three, four, five, six. And so six and four is 10. And then our three count repeats. And that's the way that row two should look. And of course, yours is going to be bigger because this is just a swatch. And it's a good idea if you want to learn how to do the pattern before you decide to make a swatch and then you can measure your stitches and adjust accordingly. So let's do row three. We've chained three and we're going to turn. We're going to stitch one double crochet in those next three double crochets because our chain three counts as our first and that will give us four double crochets on this side. Our chain three and then one, two, three double crochets. Now we're going to stitch in the center double crochet of our shell stitch and we're going to stitch a double crochet, chain one and double crochet and that's a V-stitch. And then we'll stitch a V-stitch in the center double crochet of each of the shells across. And this is the way that row three will work. We have our four double crochets, and then we place a V-stitch in the center stitch of our shell stitches. And then we end up with these last four double crochets on the end, and we just stitch one double crochet in each of those double crochets. All right, I'm kind of stretching it out so you can see the stitches better. Here's our four double crochets. Then we have a V stitch in each of our shells and then four double crochets on the end. And that's basically the way the pattern works. You'll always be lined up with your shells and V stitches. And so once you get going, it's a very easy pattern. Now for row four, if you're changing colors every two rows like the pattern is written, and again, you don't have to. We're going to bring back in our color one, snug that down, and chain three. Now, one thing to remember, when you're carrying your yarn across the side, you don't want to pull that too tight. You want to try to make it lay the same as the stitches, because if you pull it too tight, the side of your blanket will be puckered up. If you leave it too, lo too loose, it might gape a little bit. All right? So we have our chain three, we're going to turn. And one thing that I do when I'm working with two colors is I switch my skeins so that it doesn't get all tangled as we go. All right, now for row four, our chain three counts is our first double crochet. We're going to double crochet in the next three so that we have four there at the beginning and we will have four at the beginning and end of every row. And now what we're going to do is we're going to place our shell stitch in the chain one space of our V-stitch from the previous row. So we'll go right in that chain one space and stitch three double crochets. And we'll do this on every V-stitch going across. three double crochets in each of the chain one spaces of the V stitches from the previous row. And that brings us to the end. And when we get to the end of our row, we just stitch one double crochet 
in those four double crochets. And go ahead and chain three. So again, we have four double crochets. We have shell stitches going across our blanket and then four double crochets at the end. All right, let's do row five. We're not changing colors here. We have our chain three and we're going to turn and I'm going to switch my skeins over so they don't get tangled. Our chain three counts as our first double crochet and then we'll double crochet in the next three. One, two, and three. And now we're going to repeat what we did down here with our v-stitches. We'll place one v-stitch in the third stitch of each shell. So double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. And so basically, we repeated what we did here. Four double crochets, V-stitch in each, in the center stitch of each shell. And then when we get to the end of the row, we stitch one double crochet in each of those last four double crochets. And I'm not going to chain three because we're going to be changing colors back to our cream color. So then we'll change back to our color number two, being careful not to pucker the side, but we don't want it gaping either. We'll go ahead and make our chain three and turn. Then I'll switch my skeins so I don't get twisted. And so what you'll continue to do for your blanket is to repeat row four and row five, changing colors every two rows if you're following the pattern. And you'll repeat those two rows for 30 more rows. Row four and row five, repeat for 30 more rows, alternating the rows and alternating every two rows for the striping colors if you want to. So just to repeat, you're repeating row four and row five, alternating the two rows, and then alternating the colors every two rows as well. And you'll do that for 30 more rows or as long as you want your blanket. I set my swatch aside and I brought back out my blanket and this is how my blanket looks. I've got two rows of my cake yarn and two rows of my cream yarn, alternating row four and row five all the way through for the length I wanted for my blanket. This one is 30 rows. Now, when you get to the end of the row, we're going to go ahead and tie off. All right, and then we'll go ahead and take our needle and weave these ends in. And you should have the two ends if you changed colors. And if you didn't, then you'll just have the one to weave in. But I need to weave this one in and this one in. And now what we're going to do is we're going to move our blanket down to where we started. And remember, this first row was just a basic foundation double crochet row. And so we're going to count that as one row of our trim. We're going to take our yarn and we're going to join right to the top of that stitch. Mine just happens to be the same color. It doesn't have to be that way. There we go. And right in this corner, we're going to add an additional two stitches of two double crochets. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to work down the side of our blanket. We'll work across the bottom and then across the other side. All right. And so we're just going to evenly place double crochets on the side of our blanket all the way around the four corners. And then on the on those four corners, we're going to stitch three double crochets. And the thing about stitching down the side is you want to try to get your stitches in the side of the stitches and not the holes. If you put them in these holes, it ends up gaping a little bit and you don't get as nice and neat a look. So we want to try to go in the side of the stitch and just evenly stitch double crochets. There is not a set amount of stitches that you need. You really just need to look at it and stitch them as close together as you like. Some people may like them closer together and some may like them farther apart. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch down and across the bottom and then when we get over to this side where we carried our yarn all the way across, I'll show you how to do that. So continue to stitch down and around, evenly stitching double crochets and make sure you put three double crochets in each corner. Here's where I joined in my yarn right next to the foundation double crochet. I evenly double crocheted up the side of my blanket. I placed three double crochets in the corner. Then I evenly double crocheted <clears throat> across the bottom of my blanket. And I've got my three double crochets in this corner. And I want to show you this side because this is where we carried our yarn if you striped your yarn because I did every two rows and then carried my yarn across. And it's really not any different than doing the way we did the other sides. We just want to make sure that we stitch over those yarns that we carried. And so when I stitch, I'll go around making sure I stitch over those yarns that we carried. We don't want those to show through. So we'll just go around them when we're stitching. My yarn's trailing over there. And cover up those yarns. Make sure you go through, you go around where that yarn was trailed across and stitch your stitch over it. And we'll do it exactly the same as we did the other side, just making sure that we, when we stitch, we stitch around it, covering up that trailed yarn. Now we could have cut those ends every single row and had to weave in every single row and that would have been just way too much work. This way, trailing the yarn up the side is a lot easier. All right, let me show you real quick. Here is the front, here is the back of my blanket, and I stitched over those yarns, and you can't even tell. That's way better than having to weave in every single time we changed colors. All right, so I'm going to continue to work down this last side and then I'll join down here where this foundation row is that we started on and then I'll show you how to make the sweet little trim. I've completed this last side of my double crochet trim, making sure that all of my yarn carries are caught in that trim so that they don't show stitching around them. Now when you get to the end here, this is the row that we did the foundation double crochet at the beginning. 
And so we stitched at the bottom and then we're going to stitch two more so that we have three double crochets in this corner and then we're going to join to that first stitch of that foundation double crochet. There we go with a slip stitch. Now I want to change colors to make my trim a different color. So I'm going to cut that yellow off and bring in the pink. Oh, I have electricity in my yarn. It keeps popping back at me. All right, so we're going to do the same little trim that we did on our sweet baby doll. And it's basically chain three, skip two, and slip stitch. One, two, three, skip two, and slip stitch in the next stitch. One, two, three, skip two, and slip stitch in the next stitch. And I like to do this trim, and you don't have to if you don't want to. If you want to get if you think it's too girly for a little boy, you don't have to add this little ruffle trim. But I like it because it just adds a little extra something to it. And even when I've made these for little boys, I've still added that trim. And so we'll just go all the way around all four sides of our blanket making this trim. Chain three, skip two, and slip stitch in the next. And we'll do this all the way around, all four sides of our blanket, and join back over here where we started. I completed the trim all the way around the edge. I wanted to show you the corner. I just go right around the corner. I don't add any extra stitches. I just go right around. And then when we get back where we started, because we didn't have a set number of stitches for our sides and things, you may have an extra one or two chain in here. It's not going to matter, or one or two stitches, I should say, not chains, in between. It's not really going to matter. Just make sure that you join back to that first stitch where you joined in your ruffle yarn or your trim for your yarn. And just meet it up as best that you can. And of course, we'll need to weave that in with our needle. So my sweet baby blanket is completed, all ready to go with my sweet baby doll.